shots. Hey everybody, if you're watching this video, it means you've probably already seen my interview with New York City Mayor Eric Adams on The Breakfast Club, but I wanted to make this video so that I could present you with the receipts for all of the facts that I tried to present him with in that interview. So this is an unscheduled video interrupting my scheduled programming, but I promise you to the returning members of the Illuminati, you will still be getting Olay and Friends on Sunday. You should subscribe to Lolo and Olay, where Lolo and I will be dropping new videos of our podcast every Saturday, and you should join the channel. We have our own special emotes, exclusive videos, early access to videos, live premieres, all that. It's gonna be a good time. I didn't wanna risk having NYPD out here calling the facts misinformation. Now could we? So here you go. But if you're new to the Illuminati and you didn't know me before that Breakfast Club interview, hi, my name is Olayami Olurin. You heard that? Olayami. I'm gonna say that again for y'all. Olayami. But you can call me Olay. I am a movement lawyer, a former public defender, a political commentator, a writer, a creator, and what I like to call a professional loudmouth. If you already know me, you know that I am THE Eric Adams hater. If you've watched my magnum opus right here, you know that I am a hater with lots and lots of reasons. I'm a hater with lots and lots of reasons. But if you knew that, you were probably so confused when you saw me on The Breakfast Club wondering how did that happen? And listen, let me tell you, I can't quite believe it my damn self. I'm not gonna hold you. I was like, nah, ain't no way, no way. Literally up until the moment he came in the room, I was still pretty sure that was not gonna happen because I was trying to picture a world where Eric Adams and I even were in the same room, let alone speaking for 40 minutes. And you know what? I just could not see that shit. I could not see it. Yet, it happened. So. I just wanna take some quick time to give you the receipts for some of the main facts that I tried to present to him in the video and try to debunk some of his lies along the way. But I'm not gonna keep you all too long because it's three in the morning. Eric Adams acknowledged that New York City is one of the safest big cities in the country with a safe subway station, yet people don't feel safe. And I said that New York City is safe and people don't feel safe. And that has a lot to do with how the mayor himself fear mongers about crime, especially crime in the subways. And he told me to provide him with a quote of how he fear mongers about crime. But lucky for me, let me just show you how he did exactly that in this exact interview. National Guard, that there's a hyper visibility of police, that they're trying to stop people with certain uh, records from even using them. And now you have this congestion price. So how do you reconcile that? Well, let's let's go before. Uh, first of all, I would love to give me, give me the quotes on my rhetoric because I'm, I'm lost on that. Can you give me the quotes? Oh, that you which, fear monger yeah, about yeah, the subways? Yeah, give me oh, the... you've consistently done that since the day one of your administration. One of the first things you did was add a thousand officers to the subway because you claimed that the subways are unrideable. You and Hochul did this and said how dangerous it is. And you recently did that when you deployed the National Guard. Sister, but that's not, that wasn't my question, Queen. My question was, what was my fear mongering? What did I say? A few. People on the far left disagree with me. You know, many people on the far left, they say, Eric, people should be allowed to sleep on the streets um, no matter what. They should be allowed to sit on your stoop and inject themselves with drugs. They should be allowed to go in stores and steal whatever they want. They shouldn't have to pay on the subway <laughs> system. They should be allowed to carry a gun and be able to come out the next day. Like, people disagree with me all the time. Earlier you asked me to point opinion. out the rhetoric. You, <laughs> earlier you asked me to point out specifically what you say to fair monger about crime, so I just would like to say, exhibit A, like what you literally just did. You continue to say in this that New York is the safest big city while simultaneously you are the one sensationalizing the crime. Facts. I point out which all is I a fact, is, is it safer, is it too? Eric Adams said that New Yorkers feel safer when they see a high visible presence of police officers around. They said, Eric, we see more visible uniform officers in our subway system, we're gonna feel safer. We got it, we got it. Oh, let me, can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I peel it back? You can talk, you can peel it back. We, 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 so we got it that the numbers are down. We got it that we're back on the subway system um, post COVID. But when we see, this is what the public is saying. When we see the visible presence of a uniform officer, we feel safer. Fact check. A Siena study found that only 33% of New Yorkers feel safer when they see police. And only 13% of black New Yorkers found that they feel safer when they see police. And 61% of black New Yorkers would support some reduction of police funds. Three, I said that since Eric Adams became mayor, we've seen the return of stop and frisk and that Eric Adams revived neighborhood safety teams that have been disbanded after 2020 for their disproportionate abuse of black and brown people. The federal monitor who was tasked with ensuring that NYPD is following the law conducted or, under, conducted under an who? analysis, came under who? conducted an analysis that happened eight years ago, but they're still here monitoring <laughs> okay. what you're doing. And they said that you have brought back stop and frisk policies that are worse than they saw even during the Bloomberg era. But more importantly, they analyzed the neighborhood safety. 
They show me that. I could show the show, the report they is said, available, and I know it's been available to you because your spokesperson has commented yeah. on it. They did an analysis of over yeah, ten you precincts. Can't, you can't keep putting ten out stuff different that's not precincts. Factual, that is factual. There's a federal monitor reporting to Judge T. Swain on it and presenting and said what? the information. That be, since they said every, that yes. Listen, since, let me finish that, so you can peel it back. They conducted an analysis of ten different precincts, mm -hmm. and of every of the stops of ten different precincts, they found that ninety seven percent of them, by the way, of the neighborhood safety teams that were disbanded in twenty twenty because of their disproportionate abuse against black and Hispanic people that you revived, they analyzed 10 of those different neighborhood safety teams and found that they're conducting 97% of their stops on black and brown people and a quarter of them are unconstitutional. That's what the federal monitor said, not me. Yeah, yeah, and that's just Fact check, straight from the New York Times quoting the federal monitor's report. The New York Police Department's anti-crime units are still stopping, frisking, and searching too many people unlawfully, almost all of them people of color. Despite assurances from Mayor Eric Adams that new policies and training would end the practice, according to a new report by a court-appointed monitor. The monitor, Mylon Dennerstein, filed a report in federal court in Manhattan on Monday detailing what she described as unlawful policing. Ms. Dennerstein, whose position was created in 2013 after a court ruled the police department's use of stop and frisk was unconstitutional, is assigned to oversee the units, which have a history of targeting black and Hispanic people. Earlier versions of the units were responsible for a disproportionate number of police shootings. And they were disbanded in 2020. Mr. Adams reinstated and renamed them after he took office last year. But critics were skeptical that they could be run without racially profiling young men of color as previous units had. Almost all of the stops made by the rebranded neighborhood safety teams analyzed in the report, 97% were black or Hispanic people, and 24% of the stops were unconstitutional. Of 230 car stops included in the sample, only two appear to have turned up weapons, the report said. The study found especially troubling numbers in a handful of precincts, including the 41st precinct in the Bronx, where only 41% where only of the stops, 32% of frisks, and 26% of searches were constitutional, according to the report. Four. Eric Adams was boasting about the programs that he'd established at Rikers, and I said that that was not true, that Eric Adams had actually cut the $17 million for the budget used for the programs, the re-entry programs at Rikers. Rikers has been dysfunctional for generations. Mm -hmm. I came in, decreased violence, put in real incentive programs for young people there, but I didn't do it from a distance. I went to Rikers and walked the halls. I'm coming here, I'm going to see what you're going through, I want to make sure you leave here better than how you got here in the first place, and we started instituting programs to do so. But Respectfully, Mayor jail. Adams, fundamentally the things that you're <laughs> you saying know. is untrue. You actually cut $17 million that were used for classes for people at Rikers, Rikers to re-enter society. Those were cut check under your administration. Check out the programs. Those that, were cut, that under, your, cut. Those were cut under your administration. Were Fact check. Not only did Eric Adams cut the $17 million for re-entry service programs at Rikers, it accounted for less than 1% of the entire Department of Corrections $1.2 billion budget and around 0.001% of the city's budget. But he chose to cut these vital and pretty cheap programs for no other reason than fuck the people at Rikers. Five, once I confirmed that Eric Adams had actually cut the budget for the programs he had just been boasting about, he started throwing the programs under the bus all together and complaining that they weren't legitimate and that the people providing the programs for the people incarcerated at Rikers are not genuine and don't care about the people or otherwise they would be doing it for free. Well, Respectfully, like Mayor you. Adams, fundamentally the things that you were saying <laughs> no. is untrue. You actually cut $17 million that were used for classes for people at Rikers, Rikers to re-enter society. Those were cut check under the, check your- out those that, were cut you under your. Cut. Those check were cut under your administration. We were spending millions of dollars. Thirty-one people we have spend, died at Rikers we spend, since Eric Adams we became mayor. Millions of dollars for these professional folks to do these programs, reentry programs. Millions of dollars. Seven people sitting inside the class. People have profitized poverty. They have. They're making so much money off of black and brown people. If we're really true to what we say we want to do, why do we have to pay you millions of dollars to do it? Mm. You know, why don't you come on Rikers like I do and volunteer? This isn't so much a fact check, so much as I just wanted to highlight this insanity in case it had gotten by you. The mayor is making the argument that if people really care about black and brown people or people that are incarcerated, they will work for free. That they don't need wages now. Mind you, this is why Rikers itself gets $860 million yearly to lock up poor black and brown people pre-trial. So let's rewind a little bit. He cut the $17 million, just a tiny percentage of the money that he had, and he did that 
while he was crying broke about the migrant crisis. It's not that I have a problem with it. It's that, again, the sensationalism has a lot to do with the fact that you got up and declared that we have this migrant crisis. And I thought it was er interesting, your earlier point about the difference between how Ukrainian migrants are being received versus uh, migrants, black and Latino migrants. Because, again, you gave a town hall where you were the one who gave this speech and, and incent like you incentivized New Yorkers to feel this way. Never in my life have I had a problem that I did not see an ending to. I don't see an ending to this. This issue will destroy New York City. You called not specific the, countries. I remember not, you calling with countries sister, that the migrants no, were from. No, sister, they weren't no, the Ukrainian no, migrants. You weren't sister, talking about them. So, so sister, what happens when sister, we don't sister, have... Hold on, sister, sister, I did not call the countries what they were from. We're getting 10,000 migrants a month. One time we were just in Venezuela. Now we're in Ecuador. Now we're getting Russian speaking coming through Mexico. Now we're getting uh, Western Africa. A few moments later. Ecuador, Colombia, Mexico. But also signing a historic deal with the Police Benevolent Association. It was the third deal. It was only the third voluntary contract with the Police Benevolent Association in 30 years in New York, where Eric Adams voluntarily agreed to increase the wages for lots of officers and to allow extra overtime for many officers. They're here to announce a new deal with the Police Benevolent Association that would do just that. This is a, is a historic deal. Only the third voluntary contract with the PBA in 30 years. One that would make sure our officers get the benefits and compensation they deserve. Allow them to work a more flexible schedule. And mind you, NYPD blew past their $100 million budget in overtime last year. When I brought up the deaths at Rikers, Eric Adams turned to Charlemagne to say that we need to look at how people are dying. That people are not dying because of what happens to them at Rikers, but that they're coming to Rikers ill. And people say, well, Eric, you know, people are, people are dying on Rikers. Look at how they die. People are coming into Rikers in terrible medical conditions. And not it's getting not that, their medical it's appointments. Not, it's, it's not that they were dying because um, correction officers were killing them. People were coming in with heart problems, but heart under, problems. But, but they under, were overdosing on, on drugs. Fact check. Not only are people dying for a host of different reasons at Rikers, but the deaths due to medical reasons are still at the fault of the Department of Corrections because there were over 94,000 missed medical appointments because corrections officers simply failed to take people to their medical appointments. And those aren't even all the missed medical appointments, just the ones that can be directly attributed to the fault of DOC. Number seven. I said that last year we spent more than $100 million on police misconduct settlements for the NYPD and that that number has doubled since Eric Adams became mayor. Just last year, we paid out $150 million in settling uh, police misconduct uh, right. from and NYPD should, and we, that was double the wrong. number. That's double the number in police yeah, misconduct but, since you became mayor. I, Fact check. Last year, New York has paid $121 million in police misconduct settlements which was up from just $85 million in 2021. And that doesn't account for all of the money that New York has paid in police settlements. All told, the city paid nearly $184 million, primarily for personal injuries as well as property damage, according to the comptroller. Eight, I said to Eric Adams that I remembered his trip to DC to go see Biden about the migrant crisis because I remember the trip being stopped because the FBI seized his phone. I, I remember you started that tour yeah. before you were going to go to go DC yeah. and you, uh, when you were going to go to DC to, buy, to talk to Joe Biden about the migrant crisis, but you were stopped because they had the FBI had to take your phones. Uh, good Lord, you just make up stuff. Did I make that up? That's, yes. that's reported. Sister, the FBI sister, didn't seize your phones? Sister. The FBI uh, didn't seize your phones? No. But they didn't you, investigate no, your top you just, aides. That's what, not happening. What did you just say? Mm -hmm. you ju you just I said, say, I remember the tour say, that you went you, on you, when you were going to the border, when you were and going did to I come DC back? to talk I came to back because somebody President had to Biden take my phone? Because it stopped. I said, I remember on the day of, I remember it because it was Well, you got a bad, you got amnesia. Oh, me and the news. Fact check. And I don't think this clarification is actually going to make it better for Eric Adams, but... His phones were definitely seized in connection with the FBI investigation that was happening then. And his trip was definitely cut short, but it wasn't cut short for the FBI seizing his phone. It was cut short for the FBI searching and raiding his fundraisers homes. The FBI has actually raided several of Eric Adams' top aides at this point in connection with their investigation against him for illegal campaign donations, which he was forced to admit even in that interview despite his outrage at my audacity to ask him about his federal investigation. But you were stopped because they had the FBI had to take your phones. Good Lord, you just make up stuff. Did like I make that along. up? Did yes. they search your top Not aides? Not that day. Did they search the home of several, several yes. of people? Okay, Yes. that's what I said. And bonus fact, those are not the only allegations that Eric Adams is dealing with. 
He was also recently sued by a former colleague at the NYPD, a black woman who sued under the Adult Survivors Act. She alleges that while she and Eric Adams were both working for the NYPD, she had been passed up for a job promotion multiple times she believed on the basis of her race and gender. So she turned to Eric Adams, who at the time led an organization that was meant to help black people within the NYPD dealing with discrimination. So she turned to Eric Adams for help. And she alleges that he agreed to help her and told her that they would have a meeting at Coney Island after work one day, but instead of driving them to Coney Island, that he drove to a parking lot and tried to get her to have oral sex with him. And that when she didn't, he relieved himself in her presence. Ugh. Brother, ugh. Nine, when Eric Adams brought up how the media sensationalizes crime, I said that it's NYPD using their own Twitter accounts to sensationalize crime. Those random acts of violence are being highlighted. If you have, if you have 24 hours in a day and something that happens to you in an hour in a day, you start to define yourself as that entire day. Those random acts of violence are plastered on social media. They're plastered on, on like the uh, NYPD newspapers. Twitter page. They, they're plastered on everything. People begin to believe that, oh, I'm living in a city that's out of control. We are not. She made a good that's, point, though. If New York, if NYPD is, is reposting that kind of stuff, what are we supposed to think? I said, no, 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 no. I said at the beginning. Everybody, everybody got a phone, brother. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> NYPD's page is doing this. This has recently been there so much so that they're arguing with journalists on there. It's NYPD on their own Twitter pages that are posting and sensationalizing crime. And I said this at the beginning. And for the fact check. You could honestly just go to any NYPD account on Twitter and see for yourselves or read this entire article from Hellgate devoted to how NYPD uses their Twitter to sensationalize crime as well as harass journalists. But honestly, forget all of that because I have nothing better than what's happening right now. I think it's very funny that I said in this interview that NYPD uses their Twitter this way. Eric Adams denied it only for his chief of patrol to get on Twitter and start fucking harassing me. Okay. 10. I said that Eric Adams wants to sensationalize one police murder, which is a rare occurrence, while he has nothing to say of the at least 31 people that have died at Rikers since he became mayor, the at least seven people that have been killed by New York police this year, including a 19 year old that had been murdered by NYPD in Queens just a night before our interview after he called 911 for help when he was in a mental health crisis. Same breath that you want to <laughs> sensationalize me, want to highlight and point out, oh, an officer was killed the other day, which is a rare occurrence across the United States but let alone in New York. New York police officers have killed at least seven people this year, including well, a 19-year-old. An NYPD first of all, officer killed a 19-year-old in Queens dismiss, yesterday. I'm not going to dismiss the loss of a life of an innocent person that wears a uniform to protect us. But you do, us. of the a 31 rare, people rare, dead at Rikers. A rare, a rare and the 19-year-old killed rare yesterday. I, 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 I feel like... I don't want to take you out of context and I don't want people to all of a sudden criticize that you're being dismissive of a Ma Mayor young Adams, man being shot Mayor and Adams, killed. Mayor Adams, that's not going to work on Listen, me. I'm not trying to work anything yeah. on you. I'm just, I, we, I lost a member of the police department the same way I go to see the mother of the 11-year-old baby that was 11-month-old baby that was shot in the head when I first became mayor and I sat in the hospital with her. The same way I go visit these mothers who lose their children to gun violence, I go see them. Yes, but just not the I, mothers just of the people I, who are dying just, in Rikers. Just as I go, just as I go to see a the, the the family member of a slain police officer, I go visit those parents that lose their loved did you ones visit? Are now, you visiting do you do the that? family of do the? You do that? First of all, yes, I did. I held a right. You, I, I represented hundreds. You went to visit. You went to visit all, an, uh, the family member of a slain officer. No, not the slain officer. Okay, of course. No, you didn't. but what about the 19-year-old mm -hmm. that was killed yesterday by mm -hmm. NYPD in Queens when mm -hmm. he called for help? Have you said anything <coughs> about that? Are you visiting them? Yeah. The 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 mm. fact check. Very few officers die in the line of duty. In 2021, there was a 25 year record high of police deaths in the line of duty. And you know what that number was? 73. Now compare that to the 779 people police have already killed just this year, or the at least 1,247 people killed by police last year in 2023. Further, at least 31 people have died in Rikers since Eric Adams became mayor. And I say at least because after getting tired of the backlash from the mounting deaths at Rikers, his administration decided that they would stop telling the public about in custody deaths altogether. The city reported, the change in the DOC's death disclosures comes as the federal monitor overseeing the department has criticized correction commissioner Louis Molina 
where Eric Adams hired, and his team for failing to properly inform them about a recent death and four other serious and disturbing incidents involving harm to incarcerated persons. In a special report, Federal Monitor Steve Martin wrote he had to rely on media reports, including one from the city about a detainee who had been placed on a ventilator for two weeks and is now paralyzed from the neck down after being tackled by guards. I said that at least seven people have been killed by New York police this year. You can go to a website called Mapping Police Violence that I encourage you to utilize, where they track police killings all across the country. 11. I told Eric Adams that I was aware that he visited Rikers because back in 2022, after a string of deaths, he went to Rikers to lend his support to the corrections officers. I've been on Rikers Island more than any mayor in the history of the city talking with inmates and correction officers to turn around what's happening on Rikers Island. I know you Island. go to Rikers in 2022 when there were three deaths back to back because corrections officers left their post and allowed it to happen. You went to Rikers to express your support for the corrections officer. I know you go to Rikers. I, no, what no, I do want you to well, do, Eric, you know what, Mayor that, Adams. But you you keep, you keep giving out misinformation. It's not this fact check. New York One reported that in 2022, after two detainees died in custody in a 48 hour period, following the death of another incarcerated man earlier that month, Eric Adams held his first press conference at Rikers to lend his support to the corrections officers, where he said, quote, I am not ashamed of you. I am proud of you. Keep doing the job you are doing. Beyond the fact checks that I'm presenting to you, I said, you have nothing to say about the 31 deaths. You have nothing to say about the seven deaths. Nothing to say about the 31 Rikers deaths. You have nothing to say about NYPD murdering that 19 year old boy. And you know what he said about it? Nothing. So that's your fact check on how much he cares about anybody that's not the police. I think that should be a sufficient amount of receipts that I've provided to y'all. If you are still interested, trust me, that's not the tip of the iceberg on all the things that Eric Adams has done wrong in his administration or what's going on. Again, my magnum opus, my Eric Adams doc. So if you haven't seen it and you want to know more about Eric Adams administration and why I have the problem with him that I have, you should watch that. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you stick around, you like, you subscribe, and I hope you check out the other videos. I've got some great stuff on here.